people. Give God some joyful praise. Give God some joyful praise. Give God some thanksgiving today. Allow our praise to be as a sweet smelling savor in the nostrils of our God, for He is worthy today. For God is worthy of all of our praise. God is worthy of everything that we have. Everything that we brought into the presence of God, we can let it go and we can extend our hands. Those of you all who have been carrying your heavy load this whole week, I implore you, I encourage you to let it go and to lift those hands toward heaven and give God a wave offering this morning. Come on, give him a wave offering. Let's make it thick in the house of the Lord today. Come on, let's stir the anointing and let's get this expectation for worship started so the Holy Spirit can do what God wants it to do in this place. Yes, with shouts of joy, we celebrate the good news of our God's love. Open your hearts to the warmth of God's redeeming love. God has poured out such a wonder into our lives. So this morning we come to worship God with our hearts, with our souls, with our voices. Great is our God, and he's greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. The word of God says, oh, taste. Oh, taste. Come on, if you can taste the sweet smell. If you can taste the savor of God, come on, salt of the earth. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. And blessed are they that trust in him. That's why this morning we're going to let everything that hath breath, the trees, the animals, every believer in here, whether you're joining us on the conference call, on Facebook Live, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let our praise ring to the rafters, shake the foundation, and ascend to the heavens. Will you pray with me? Oh God, creator of the cosmos. So often we take you for granted. We take for granted that you will answer our prayers, that you will heal us and make us whole. God, forgive us for when we take you for granted that even you loved us unconditionally, Lord. Forgive us for not appreciating your grace and your presence in our lives. Help us this morning and every day, God, to be more thankful, God. Give us the faith to see you in everything and everyone around us so that we might be truly grateful, Lord, for the healing love you have offered us, for the patience you have for us, for the presence that you will never fail. We give you thanks, O oh Lord. So we bring our hearts and our spirits this morning to you that we may grow in our faith and service to you. That we might fulfill your work, your will, and your way. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place. Have your way, oh God. Take control, oh God. Move us out of the way, oh God. Have your way. In Jesus' name.
more like him hallelujah hallelujah y'all it ain't about me I'm talking about him more like him glory to God thank you Jesus this morning I'm assigned to bring to you the scripture which comes from St. Luke the 17th chapter starting at the 11th verse and going through the 19th verse and it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah. Let us bow our heads. Father God, I am so grateful this morning, hallelujah, that you allowed me to rise, Father God, that you allowed all of us, God, to arise this morning for one more day that you have made that we've never seen before, Lord. We are grateful, Lord, that you've allowed us to be in this place, God. It did not have to be, but you saw fit for us to come out to the house of worship one more time so we gather lord to say thank you for your mercy and your grace god i want to say thank you for your mercy and your grace god that has kept me down through this week god thank you god that i have breath in my body to declare your works and your glory in the earth father god father god i watch people die this week I watch people mourn the loss of their loved ones this week. And God, I want to say thank you that you gave me another day. Oh God, I want to say thank you, God, that I was able to be with and be present with those who were transitioning, Lord, who knew they were going to be with you in the presence of your holy angels. But God, you let they left some people behind, Lord God, to mourn their loss, God. And I want to pray for them, Lord, and I just pray for everyone in the community who has lost loved ones, God. 
Their hearts are heavy, Lord. But those, for those who know you, let them not mourn as those who have no hope. We thank you for Jesus this morning. God, we thank you for your spirit that guides and teaches us and leads us, Father God. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for your word. For when we hear your word, faith is grown and faith is cultivated, Father. Strengthen our faith, Lord. Help us to know that you will never leave us nor forsake us, God. Let us look to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help comes from you. You neither slumber nor sleep. I want to say thank you, God. Have your way in this service, Lord God. Let it be none of us, God. And all of you, let us not only be hearers of your word, but doers of your word, Lord. Not looking at ourselves in the mirror and turning away and forgetting what manner of man we are. Help us, Lord, because we are weak, God. We are frail, but in our weakness, your strength is made perfect, God. Your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Therefore, I glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest on me. God, I want to say thank you today. Hallelujah. You're worthy of all the praise, honor, and glory. God, I'll give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory this day, God. Hallelujah, God. And if I do anything for you, God, and get some accolades, I'll lay them at your feet because you are the only one who's worthy. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for that woman, that mother, God, who is missing their child, who hasn't heard from God. I pray that you comfort her heart, Lord God. I pray for those that are on their sick bed right now. They want to be here, but they can't, Lord. I pray that you endow them with your peace and your grace and your comfort right now, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we're calling on you, Lord, for you the only help we know. If thou would withdraw yourself from us, where would we go? But we know that you said you'd never leave us, nor forsake us, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. With your manservant today, have your way, Lord. Let what comes through him, Lord, be words that are endowed by your spirit, Lord. God, give him clarity. Give us clarity as we hear the word. Let us hear the implicit messages in our lives when things come to haunt us and to taunt us, God. Help us to know that there is a God who's sitting high and looking low and is able to answer every need of our hearts. We want to say thank you. And so we yield this service to you, Lord. Whatever problems we are thinking about, let us lay them down right now so that we can hear from you because there is a word from you. Teach us to tune out the voices that are in our heads about our past and the things that have gone wrong, the things that people have done. Let us lay those aside for a little while that we might be able to hear from you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We give your name praise, honor, and glory. We lift you up today. This worship service is all yours. We thank you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.
Jehovah is enough. Is he enough this morning, saints? Our God is enough. What a beautiful song. What a beautiful mantra to sing to the Lord on such a beautiful day. To let God know that you are enough. Even if you don't do anything else, Lord. You've already done enough. My God, we thank God today for each of you all who are joining us, whether it be virtually, on the telephone tree, or in person. We want to welcome you to the one of the friendliest fellowships in Fuquay Verena. Basil Creek Missionary Baptist Church. Come on, that doesn't sound like you believe that. I said we want to welcome you to one of the friendliest fellowships in Fuquay Arena. We want to acknowledge you if this is your first time joining us today. If you're joining us from another part of the body of Christ or just making your way through, we want to acknowledge you if you would, just extend your hand and let us love on you and let us recognize you. If you're a visitor today, go ahead and raise your hand for us and make sure that we can. Come on, let's give a hand clap of praise. We see you. If you're online, go ahead and send us up some praise hands, some praying hands. Put your name in the chat and let us recognize you. From the bottom of our hearts, we like to thank you for following God and obeying God to come in fellowship with us today. We recognize that you could have been anywhere this morning, but you chose to come and worship God with us, and we are thankful. If you have time, I ask that you allow me to at least give you a fist bump and let get to know your name after the service. So we thank God for that. We have the announcements that we're praying for and preparing for. Before we go to the announcements, I want to just announce directly following our announcements, we're going to have Sister Liz Braid give us a celebrating moment in women's history. So as we prepare for these announcements prayerfully, I'm going to ask that you prepare your hearts and your minds and your schedules because God is doing some wonderful things in the house. Amen? Come on. God is doing some wonderful things as we gradually responsibly and safely open back up the house of God. God is doing some wonderful things in here. We have many ways that you can stay connected with this ministry and grow in God. So we're going to ask that you govern your hearts, your minds, and your calendars as we prepare for the announcements. Creek Church family and friends, and welcome to our service. We are so glad that you decided to join us today on this special day. Attention parents and grandparents, the youth department is planning an exciting Easter celebration for our children. We will present the Easter story, get a special book and have an Easter egg hunt. Please be my mommy, Rhonda Curtis, to get your child's line today also. We are collecting plastic eggs full with candy and treats for the Easter egg hunt. Eggs can be brought to church anytime between now and April 10th. Do you love singing? We want to restart our children's choir. See Sister Faye Garrett to sign up. The leadership team will meet on Friday, April 22nd at 7 p.m. This will be a Zoom meeting. Then on Saturday, April 23rd at 11 a.m., we'll have a church-wide virtual conference. 
The Zoom link will be mailed to your home. Seniors age 65 and above, we received a supply of N95 masks from the state of North Carolina. Please let our church secretary know if you would like to receive a supply. Wednesday, March 23rd at 7 p.m., join us on Facebook Live or the church conference line for Bible study. Bible study will be taught by Reverend Patterson. Then hop on Facebook Thursday, March 24th at 6 p.m. for a free exercise class with Tamara. The weather is warming up and it's time to beautify the church grounds. If you enjoy yard work outside and have a couple of hours to donate, please contact trustee Tracy Garrett. Announcements are shared with the congregation via church phone tree system weekly on Wednesdays. If you're not receiving these calls, please update your phone number with the church secretary. Phone tree calls from, come from 919-762-0392 and 919-762-0393. Pastor Patterson's office hours are Tuesdays from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., Fridays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Saturdays by appointment only. Our main conference phone number is 605-562-8401, access code 2206554. A virtual prayer service is held on our conference line on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays at 7 p.m. each week. Please join us. Not vaccinated yet? We encourage everyone ages five and above to please get vaccinated in order to protect our community. Join us in praying at noon to intercede on behalf of our communities, our leaders, our families, and the entire world. Prayer works. The outreach ministry is asking each member to bring a food donation on the first Sunday, Sunday of the month. Our food market is held every first Saturday of the month in the Aussie Stinson Fellowship Hall located on the lower level. Your giving and prayers are needed and most appreciated. Giving can be done via U.S. mail, PayPal, and drop off on Sundays. Blessings to each one of you. Stay strong. Stay focused and yeah. trust yeah. God. We love you. right now okay good good morning everybody the the name mother is the most beautiful name on earth this is why I have chosen to pay tribute to my mother and share fond memories a mother is someone who carries you for nine months carries you for about three years in her comforting arms and carry you forever in her heart she was the first to hold you in her arms, love and provide for you. If it were not for our mothers, most of us would not be here today, nor would we be the person that we are. The impact of a mother on her children is immeasurable. She holds us from birth and plays a part in our life always. I came from a second generation of 16 children. My father desired to follow in his footsteps of his in the footsteps of his father, who had 16 children. To this end, he happily conceded. I have eight brothers and seven sisters. To this day, the Lord has blessed us with continual life without loss of one. With joy and thanksgiving, I can recall how my mother shared her time and energy with each of us. Though her time was limited, she managed to give us personal time. I can recall wanting her to spend more time with me, but now that I have two adult children, I understand how blessed I was to receive 
the attention I needed. I wondered to how she did it and still maintained her sanity. <laughs> when it was time for us to attend school, she arose up early to prepare breakfast and get us ready with the clothes she had laid aside the night before. When it was time for us to get on the bus, she would be at the door making sure we had all our books and our lunch. After school, she helped us with our homework, gave us a bath, and prepared lunch for the next day. She encouraged us to do our best and taught us the importance of learning all we could and be independent. She graduated in the top of her class. She loved participating in spelling bees. My mom was always a lady. I never heard her say a harsh word, use profanity or gossip. She was a Christian. We went to church every Sunday and every time the door was open. She taught us about Christ and taught us Bible verses. One of her favorite Bible verses was uh, Psalms 91. He that delivereth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. In him shall I trust. Surely he will deliver me from the snares of the fowler and from the noisy pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall I trust. His truth should be thy shield and buckler. Yes. For I should not be afraid of the terror by night, yes. nor for the error that flies by day, yes. nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand may fall by my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it should not come nigh thee. Yes. Only with thy eyes shall thy behold and see the reward of the wicked, because he has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwellers. He will give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They will bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash their foot against the stone. The lion, young lion and the adder there will trample under feet. Because he has known my name, I will deliver him. He shall call upon me in time of trouble, and I will honor him. And with long life will I satisfy mm. him and show him my salvation. My God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Mom, you are the best. Yes. On this day, I want to say thank you for raising me, for my happy childhood, for standing back and turning me loose, for letting me make my mistakes, for helping me clean up my mess, for loving me that much for balancing just what I wanted and just what I needed, for birthdays, holidays, and unforgettable everydays, for treats just because, for being on my side, for putting me in my place when I tried to be smart, <laughs> for putting me in a better place anytime I was down, mm. for making it all better, <clears throat> and I do mean all, for being my mother, for being a friend, for being the best, a tribute to my mother.
need just a couple people to help me worship God right now. Come on, as the ministry music team takes their seats, I just need a few people to help me. Help me touch God in this moment. We thank you, Lord. Come on, where are my true worshipers at? Where are my true worshipers at? We thank you, God. Love you, Lord. Thank God for the sweet, for the sweetness of God. Thank you, God, for the matchless name of Jesus, for the name above all names. We thank you, Lord, in this house, God. We thank you, Lord. God, forgive us if we don't know how to respond when you stop by, God. But we thank you, Lord. I know our time is well spent, but God, this is why we come together, Lord. This is why we gather to worship you, Lord, because you are worthy. Bless your name. Bless your name, oh God. Yeah. We bless God in this house today. Come on, all of you all who want to bless God, put your hands together and give God your sacrifice of praise. Come on, I'm talking to a couple of folks today, not the religious folks. There'll be other Sundays where we'll follow your regimen and your liturgy, but today I'm talking to some folks with some relationship. 
who don't mind allowing God to stop by and put some ugly tears in your face. You don't mind to sweat that relaxer and perm out your hair and let your mascara run. You don't mind kicking off your shoes and waving your holy hands toward God. We worship you. We love you. But you first loved us. <laughs> I know. Deacon Bo, I don't know anyone else. There is no one else. No one can love me like God. No one else. Nobody else. All right, come on, give God a wave offering. In Jesus' name. Yes, God, have your way in this place, oh God. I promise, beloved, I will not hold you longer than the Holy Spirit tells me to. There's a word for the house this morning. You heard it read from the Lucan Gospel, chapter 17. Verses 11 through 19, the story of the ten lepers. Thank you, God, for your visitation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I want to give our sermon lesson the title Trust the Process. You can say it. Come on, trust the process. TTP. Trust the process. Pray with me. Beloved God, thank you for your visitation. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your salvation, Lord. Thank you for your word, God. Thank you for the gift of life. I ask, God, that in this preaching moment that you allow me to remove myself, that you take the eyes off of me, and that you point our earthly and heavenly direction towards you. Lord, we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer, Holy Spirit, what it is that only you can do in Jesus name trust the process Vicky in chaplaincy we have a saying trust the process it's more like our mantra when things get tough we encourage each other with trust the process when one of us become worn out from an overnight shift full of code blues, code stimmies, code strokes, death, dying, and suffering, and you missed an entire night of sleep trying to pour out compassionately and be present to the suffering of others, in the morning, we tell that chaplain, trust the process. If you get stuck, Disoriented, frustrated, trust the process. But it's difficult, beloved, to trust the process 
when you don't know the outcome. It's difficult to trust the process when you really don't trust yourself, nor do you really trust the one who gave you the process. As faithful followers of Jesus Christ, we need to trust God in all of our hearts, with all of our hearts. And that means all. Someone say all means all. Not leaving any parts where we are depending on our own understanding. Trusting is depending on God. It's not saying, God, I trust you with what I want to do, but not with what you want to do with me or within me. We can trust God because God has credibility. God has some cosmic street cred. If you just look up in the sky, you see that beautiful ball of fire and plasma that God set on a timer. It rises at the same time every day for eons and eons, and the moon follows it right on schedule. God has some credibility with faithfulness. He's been faithful not just to us, but to every generation that has walked on this earth. God often takes us through a process of preparation to increase our faith, to deepen our compassion, and to help us become more thankful. In Luke 17, we find Jesus en route to Jerusalem where he will meet his fate at the cross. Somewhere between Samaria and Galilee, Jesus encounters and heals 10 lepers. This faithful meeting is only recorded in the Gospel of Luke. From a distance, the 10 lepers called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have mercy. See, let me help you a little bit. See, see grace is when you get what you don't deserve. But what they were asking for was mercy. Mercy is when you don't get what you deserve. They screamed out, have mercy on us. You see, lepers were the outcasts. They had to walk the streets and announce their uncleanliness. They were considered uh, 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 criticized and ostracized. They were made to feel like the other. You know, many times that happens in religion. Yeah, that's what happens right here in church. We can make people feel like a leper with our judgment. We make people wear their sins on their sleeves. While many of our sins can be concealed with church cliches, prophetic, I said prophetic, that is pathetic attempts at trying to be prophetic, fashionable facades, phony smiles and fake laughter. Am I talking to anybody? But if truth be told, we all have a little leprosy, unclean thoughts, unclean spirits, unclean habits and behaviors, unclean and leprous desires. Others of you have always felt like an outsider. I know I'm not the only one in here that felt like you were misunderstood. You never really fit in with the crowd, especially after you started following Christ. Your old friends started to treat you differently. Family members accused you of acting funny. Your co-workers wouldn't stop and talk to you anymore. That's because God had set you aside. You weren't leprous. You were not unclean. God just wanted to set you aside and make you sacred because what he was going to do in your life could not be contaminated. But those people who are considered less than, the social rejects, the outcasts. Those are Jesus' peeps. Those are who Christ died for. You notice in the text, the text said that Jesus, he saw them. Say that with me, beloved. Jesus saw them. When Jesus saw them, he did not send them away, nor did he cure them instantly, which he could have done. Rather, he saw them. He noticed them when the rest of the world considered them unclean, invisible, 
unimportant, disposable, a menace to society. Jesus recognized their pain even before they asked for mercy. It's because, beloved, Jesus knows all about your struggles. Can, can I get an amen in the house? I'm telling you, Jesus knows everything that you're going through. Jesus understands every pain and every heartache that you have. That's why there is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Will he comfort you when you're lonely? Will he defend you when you're defenseless? Will he help you when you're helpless? Will he love you when you're unlovable? There's not a friend. Like the lowly Jesus. Somebody ought to say, no, not one. But he also gave them a task. A mission to fulfill. A process to complete. Jesus said, go and show. Go and show yourself to the priest. You see, sometimes God wants to show off his handiwork. You must have to trust the Lord even before you receive your deliverance, even before you understand the plan. You must trust the plan with all your heart and lean not to your own finite understanding. You see, beloved, because God will send you out before you think you are ready. God will put dreams, aspirations, and goals in your heart before you know how they'll come to pass. Then he will give you the directions on how to achieve it and bring it to fruition. That's because God doesn't always call the equipped. Rather, he equips the call. The process and the wait time is directly related to the power of the promise and the benefit of your blessing. Anybody waiting on something today? Anybody waiting inside of a process and you don't know where you're going? You just know that every time God says move, I'm going to move. The process is a faith exercise. You've got to learn how to let go of your own inhibitions and let God have rule in your life. God doesn't want to be the co-captain of your soul. God wants to be the pilot. But I understand that the, God's process can be painful, lonely, confusing, frustrating at times. But the process is necessary, beloved. Just like the process God gave to Gideon when he told him to go and fight the Midianites. And he told him to reduce his army from 32,000 down to 300. One day I'm going to preach where my dog's at. Y'all going to let me come back and preach where my dog's at? Not today. Someone say, not today, pastor. I'm a preacher, though. In Psalms 37. God gives us the process for having peace fulfilled in promises. Verse 1, he says, don't worry, beloved. Verse 3, he says, trust and do good. Verse 4, he says, delight in the Lord. Verse 5, he says, commit your way to the Lord. And verse 7, he says, rest. Don't worry about it and don't become angry because I got everything under control. I like the story at the pool of Bethesda. The man who had been sick for 38 years complained to Jesus, thinking Jesus was going to say, oh, poor baby. He said, but Jesus, no one will help me get to the pool. And Jesus, instead of healing him right there, Jesus gave him a process. Jesus told him, get up. Oh, that didn't resonate with some of y'all. God is talking to some of y'all right now. Some of y'all are waiting on the deacons to come and get you. Some of y'all are waiting on the trustees to come and get you. Some of y'all are waiting on the intercessory prayer. Some of y'all are waiting on pastor to come pull it out of you. But Jesus says today, if I called you, get up. Take your bed and walk. He gave him a process. And as the man obeyed in faith, the text tells us he was instantly healed. See, the process may seem tough at times, but the end goal is greater than anything you can imagine. At times, opportunities seem beneficial, and many of them present themselves in a way that is seductive to our souls and to our hearts. But we must always ask God, is this the direction you want me to go in? Everything that looks good to me is not good for me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all had some relationships you thought was good to your soul. But God ended it because it was not conducive to where God wanted to take you. You cried too many nights over that joker. But God says it was never designed for you. 
I have a plan and a process for you. And if you follow me and if you trust me, I'm going to lead you into your destiny. They all quiet on me today. Mature believers trust God through turbulent times. That's because the process reminds us to wait on the Lord. The process shows us that faith without works is dead. God's process prepares us for ministry and eternal life. Are you waiting on God today? Are you trusting God in your process? That's why Luke 17 is so important to our faith. The story is more about trusting, obeying, and being thankful than it is about miracles performed. Jesus uses the faith of a foreigner to show us how to trust him and to be thankful. See, under normal circumstances, Jews wouldn't have nothing to do with Samaritans. But these nine Jewish and one Samaritan leper were drawn together because of their common misery. Y'all know misery loves company, right? You know, that's why some of your girlfriends and your homeboys always calling on you, trying to dump on you. And you, they ask you, why are you so joyful? Don't you know what I'm going through? Trying to break up your happy home, trying to break up your happy marriage, trying to break up your happy job. Saying, because they're miserable. Misery loves company. They jealous of your joy. You want to protect your joy. Somebody else say, you know what? I'm tired of that. You can't just dump on me today. I've got too much joy. I work too hard. I've been delivered through too much. I've come too far for let you to mess up my joy with all that mess and garbage you got in your life. Boy, I will pray for you over there, but over here don't touch my joy. Jackie, that's another sermon. They jealous of my joy. I'm going to preach it, but not today. Both Jesus and the nine of the lepers were all from Galilee. After they were healed, only one of the ten came back to say thank you. I can imagine those nine Galilean lepers were like, that's just Jesus, Mary and Joseph's boy. I went to school with his brothers, James and Jude. Another might have been like, Jesus was cool, but he ain't all that. Some of y'all church folks are just like that. You're just like the nine lepers. You've been saved and around so long, Jesus, that, that, that you will be desensitized to Jesus' divinity. You've been saved 19, up 10 years. You've been around Jesus so long that you have become apathetic and complacent. You no longer understand or can recognize the blood-saving power of Jesus' sacrifice. But there is something, beloved, about remembering your baptism. There is something about understanding your suffering and understanding the suffering of others. There is healing in your humility. So for those of you all who think you've come enough, think you've heard every sermon, sang every song, gave every gift, done everything you can in the church, I will implore you that you need to get on your knees and pray this prayerful prayer. Take me back, oh Lord. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back, oh Lord, where I first believed. Anybody need to get in a time capsule this morning and go back to where you didn't mind gripping the altar and crying your eyes out. You didn't mind sitting on the mourner's bench. You didn't mind being in church longer than an hour. You didn't mind giving all you had because God was fresh and new and sweet and you were excited excited about him. But now it's routine. That's just Jesus. He know I'm thankful. I ain't got to say it. You ought to give thanks, beloved. Verse 15 said, when he saw that he was healed, he came back praising God in a loud voice and he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. That tells me that your trials and tribulations shouldn't have to drive you on your knees to the ground. You hear what I said? It shouldn't be your trials and tribulations and your suffering that puts you on your knees. Your faith in Jesus should put you on your knees. Your belief that Jesus is all that you need should put you on your knees. You should already be on your knees thanking God when the trouble arrives. 
you ought to give God thanks. Because you know you wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Jesus. Can I try and make a live for some real folks out there? You ought to give God thanks because after a night of revelry and irresponsibility, the test came back negative. Let me preach to the choir here. Can I preach to some real folks in here? You ought to give God thanks because when you were guilty, the judge said dismissed. You ought to give God thanks because when you had the same illness as somebody else, you lived and they did not. You ought to give God thanks because God delivered you. You ought to give God thanks because Jesus saved you. Thanks. The Bible tells us give God thanks. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Give thanks for his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for his wonderful deeds to humankind. Give thanks and bless the Lord, oh my soul. Everything that is within me, my voice, my feet, my hands, my heart, my energy, I'm going to even bless you in my trouble. That takes relationship, beloved. When you can say, God, I'm going to even bless you in the midst of my circumstance. I don't even know if you're going to work it out. But one thing I do know is that you already worked it out. And I'm going to praise you until I receive my deliverance. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. You ought to give God some audible, demonstrative, undignified, undescribable praise I understand that some genteel people might say well that's not my personality that's not my worship style but if you're like me you understand that God has been too good to you to sit on your praise you ought to tell your neighbor don't judge me beloved you can't appreciate my praise because you don't understand my process Yeah, I'm almost done. We only 10 minutes over. <laughs> 12 years ago, God called me to full-time ministry. God called me to full-time ministry before there were any ministry opportunities. <laughs> it grieved my soul, kept me awake at night. But there was this song by Donald Lawrence. He said, let the word do the work. And one line in that word, in that song was, your ministry is built on faith. Your calendar is about to be booked for 12 months straight. You know I sang that thing Monday morning, Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, all day Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And for 10 years, nothing happened. But how many of y'all know, when you move in faith, things start happening in the spiritual realm. Oh, y'all not hearing me? You don't believe it'll come to pass? You don't believe it'll come to pass? Let me tell you what happened on March 1st, 2022. God delivered, but he had me confessing and praying and believing years before he brought it to pass. Y'all better learn how to confess and wait on the Lord. For it's a process. He has some things. I had to go through to raise me up in him. He has some things I had to endure to teach me how to pray. He has some circumstances I had to go through so I could be there for others. Trust the process. You better trust the process. I remember the deacons was like, we're still in the process, and we were like, we better trust it, because God's will is going to be done anyways. You might as well get on board to whatever God is doing. You might not like it. You might not understand it. You might not comprehend it, but get on board. You better get on board God's trust train and ride it all the way into glory. 
into your destiny because God has given you favor and that's why he's preserved you so long that's why he didn't take you out in 1990 that's why he didn't take you out in 1977 that's why you're here today so you can praise God for every victory won The Bible said, as they walked, as they walked, as they walked, they were healed. Can I, can I come down? The Bible says, as they walked, they received their healing. They didn't know when it was going to happen. But they knew if I take every step according to what the master says, I will be made whole. I wish I had some folks to just walk it out, walk it out. Also, I know I got some folks. Y'all 70% saved, but got some 30% world in you. Let me take you back to what Bobby Brown said. Every little step that you take, God will be with you. Every little move that you make, he'll be together. Every step that you take with your God, God is leading the way. God is preparing the way. God is moving out the blockages. God is conquering the enemy's assignment. God is lifting you up, making you stronger, increasing your faith. You ought to give God some praise in this house. When you're broke, beloved, get moving. When you don't have an MBA to start that business, somebody ought to say Google it and get started. When you buy that instrument before you know how to play, whatever it is that God is calling you to, move in that direction. Before you get the details, trust God's plan. I'll leave you with this. It seems that the nine lepers obeyed Jesus and the Samaritan disobeyed. Jesus said, go and show the priest. The priest was the only one who could declare you cleansed. The priest is the only one who can declare you cleansed. Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. And the nine went to what they thought the priest was. I wish I had a couple of Samaritans in here. The nine church folk, religious folk, traditional folk, thought the priest was over there. That's where their memory, my muscle memory took them. Their theological muscle memory took them in that direction. But it was for 10%. I ought to say just a tithe. Just 10% of those who were healed turned back. Jesus didn't say who the priest was. He said, go and show the priest. And because of the Samaritan's faith, he recognized that the only healer, giver of life, and redeemer is Jesus Christ. You better know who the real healer is. Where your real help comes from. Turn to the real priest. The only high priest. Because he recognized only Christ can deliver. In the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Spirit. We make this plea to you this morning. What a beautiful morning to come and give your life to Christ as the spiritual and physical doors of the church are open wide to you to receive you with the welcoming, opening, loving, and forgiving arms of Jesus Christ.
This is your moment in time. Won't you accept Jesus into your life? Even if you feel like you've backslidden and you feel like you're unclean, God is able to redeem and wash you clean and make you whole again. This is your opportunity. As we are opening up the physical doors of our house of worship, we would love to have you as a family member. If you've been searching, you've been curious, you've watched enough Facebook Live, you've driven by the parking lot enough times, won't you come and join us and be part of the Basil Creek Church family where we will love you unconditionally, where we will disciple you in the ways of Jesus Christ, we will hold you accountable to your purpose and your destiny in God. You belong here. My final plea, my final plea is to lift up all of our dear souls who are not with us in person but are on the sick and confined list. Will you join me in lifting them up before the throne of God with our thoughts, our love, and our prayer. Sister Dorothy Davis, we lift you up. Sister Texana Washington, we lift you up. Sister Mary Davis, we lift you up. Sister Lola Booker, we lift you up. Sister Yolinda Utley, Sister Irene Baldwin, Sister Rita Kelly, we lift you up. Sister Rita Wa Ruby Watson, we lift you up. Sister Deborah Wright, we lift you up. Sister Evelyn Jones, we lift you up. Sister Anita Spence, Sister Dorothy Bell, Sister Lucille Moore, we lift you up. Sister Jeanette Curtis, we lift you up. Sister Mary Hood Sanders, Sister Margaret McLean, we lift you up. Sister Andrea K. Moore, Sister Christine Stewart, we lift you up. Sister Rhonda Birch, who is at home recovering. Sister Jean Hedgepath, who is in the community. Deaconess Margaret Green, Deacon Catherine Jeffries, Brother Thomas Spence, we lift you up. Brother Alvis Walker, Brother Anthony Whitaker, Brother Tony McDowell, Brother Robert Jones, Deacon Oscar Steele, Deacon Jimmy Evans, Brother William Hodge, Brother Joe Spence, we lift you up. Brother Larry Norris, Deacon Frederick Elliott, Reverend John McRae, Brother Price Laster, Brother Justin Marleek Hodge, Brother James Turk Sr., and Brother James Watson, who is at home recovering, we lift you up. If your name was not on this physical list, know your name is on the tablet of God's heart. And he lift you up. We're going down from this experience. And I want to bless all of the gifts and the offerings and the tithes that were given to this house of worship. Will you join me in prayer as we bless the offering? God, we thank you for every gift and every gift giver. We ask, Lord, that these tithes, these offerings, and these gifts cover the ministry mandate that you have placed on this great house of worship, Lord, that we be able to go into the community, God, that we be able to give drink to the thirsty, God, clothe the naked, God, and feed the hungry, God, and do ministry in deep waters. Lord, we ask you to multiply the givers households, Lord. Let them give out of their surplus and not their lack, God, that you will press it down, shake it together, and make it run over into their lives, Lord. We thank you for the we thank you for the offering in Jesus' name. Today, I want to dismiss the back of the church. Is that okay? I want to dismiss from the back of the church. I've been meaning to do this for two years. <laughs> Receive this benediction, beloved. Go in peace. Love and care for one another in the name of Jesus Christ. 
And may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loves us in his grace, give us unfailing courage and firm hope, encouraging you and strengthening you by the power of the Holy Spirit, granting to you the joy of your salvation and the compassion and the tenderness of your Savior. This both now and forever. And the people of God said, Amen.